I now turn to Ranking Member Cantwell for her opening remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for this hearing. Congratulations, Mr. Isaacman, on being renominated uh, to lead NASA, and Mr. Haynes on your nomination to be a sec Assistant Secretary of Commerce. I, too, would like to welcome our colleague, Senator Britt, from a state that has a very robust aerospace community and look forward to continuing to work with her. And I'd like to say a special welcome to two Washingtonians who are here, Bill Nye, the science guy from Washington, and Mr. Dietrich, who is Mr. Haynes' father-in-law. Great to have you here as well in support of him. Mr. Isaacson, I supported your nomination the first time you came before the committee, and I hope to do so again. I, as the chairman mentioned, hope to get you in this position before the end of the year. But there is uh, no secret that a lot of NASA changes have been made since the last time you were before this committee, including the NASA decision to recompete for the lunar lander, the release of the president's proposed NASA budget, which calls for cutting the agency's budget by nearly a quarter in the workforce, and nearly a third of the science funding cut in half. So given all that, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here to answer questions about NASA's future. And I hope that today's hearing will show that there is bipartisan agreement, strong bipartisan agreement, that we must redouble our efforts to get American astronauts back to the surface of the moon as soon as possible. At our committee hearing in November, we heard concerning testimony from several expert witnesses who left a little, who left little room for doubt that the current SpaceX lunar lander would not be ready to put Americans back on the moon either in 2027 or 2028. And this is almost certainly would lose the race uh, to China. And I know that you are going to have robust competition. In response, the acting administrator, Duffy, reopened the contract and its comp competition for the lunar lander that can be ready sooner by the end of 2028. And I think this was the correct decision. And I expect you to continue executing on this plan if confirmed. To be clear, winning the race to the moon is not just about short-term token victories. It is the first step in accomplishing a very long-term presence on the lunar surface, which is strategic economically and in a national security imperative. Mr. Isaacsman, I expect to hear from you today about how you will ensure we achieve these goals. NASA is also much more than just a moon exploration program. The agency leads in a number of other vital strategic missions, including aeronautic research, space technology, and of course, the agency's critical science mission. NASA is one of the world's leading research and development organizations. I think that's why we have, I don't know, about 50 people waiting outside to get in this hearing room. I think they really believe you're going to get confirmed, and they all want to be first in line to talk about all these developments. NASA is one of the leading research and development organization and agency that feeds a multiple of sectors of innovation including AI, quantum, advanced aerospace materials, and manufacturing and aviation safety. You and I have had a chance to talk about this issue as it relates to, uh, in my home state, 1,500 companies from a robust aerospace supply chain, including 40 <coughs> Artemis program suppliers, and this issue of a tech hub working on next generation thermoplastics that is so critical to all space and aero to get a high rate piece manufacturing production. As we discuss these issues, Director Vaught has been working to gut NASA's budget, especially in science. Earlier this year, multiple NASA whistleblowers provided evidence showing that OMB was pushing NASA to implement the dangerous cuts requested in the president's budget for fiscal year 2026 disregarding the law and the impacts that this would leave on NASA. This is just unacceptable. Mr. Isaacson, if confirmed, I expect you will push back on these dangerous ideas and advocate for NASA's budget. Oh, I also invite you to visit Washington State. <laughs> We'd love to continue this discussion on how to generate the next aviation innovation. Uh, it's clear that there's a lot going on that will help us on the moon to Mars mission, not just the 40 Artemis suppliers, but a lot of other issues in how to uh, guarantee our satellite communication for the future and how to make sure that is secure. So thank you again for your willingness to step up to these challenges. Turning to you, Mr. Haynes, have confirmed the Assistant Secretary of Commerce, Industry, and Analysis. You will be responsible for strengthening the globe's competitiveness in U.S. industry and overseeing key trade analysis. You would lead a team charged with value-added analysis and tools to support economic policy decisions. 
No doubt there's been a big sea change since COVID about supply chain issues and supply chain vulnerabilities and the interest that uh, commerce play a larger role in identifying those risk sectors. Myself and Senator Risch have been leading a charge on fusion technology and hoping that we could be very aggressive on supply chain issues if, in fact, fusion technology gets to the actual uh, uh, point of manufacturing in the United States. Um, so I look forward to working with you on those supply chain issues. And uh, I, I want us to continue to know that um, we, we have to reduce tariffs. In my mind, tariffs are causing Americans to be challenged on affordability issues, and I look forward to working with you and asking you questions about that agenda as well. And welcome to our colleague from Tennessee, Senator Haggerty.